When you think of Nintendo, you may think of all the well-known series and franchises, such as your Mario's, Zelda's, and Pokemon's. And, for most people that own Nintendo consoles, that is solely what they play. But, often some of the best games are the lesser known games that are really spoken of. In this video, we will be discussing some of the most interesting, fun, or just downright bizarre games that Nintendo has ever made. So without further ado, let us begin with the top 5 most obscure Nintendo games and series. The series consists of two games, namely Famicom Detective Club The Missing Hair and Famicom Detective Club The Girl Who Stands Behind. In the first game, you take the role of a young man named Taro Ninton who has developed a serious case of amnesia. Through his adventure, he must find out how he lost his memory and in doing so, he discovers a mysterious murder case. In The Girl Who Stands Behind, you play as the same man a certain amount of time in the past. In the game, a sighting of a ghost is spread around a high school, a ghost that attacks from behind when you least expect it. Both the games revolve around exploring a town to find evidence and leads on what may be happening, where there are multiple options that may be used on each character such as talking to them to find out more information on the current case. Previously, the games had never been officially translated outside of Japan, until recently when Nintendo announced that they would be remaking the games in a bundle on the Nintendo Switch, which has significantly raised awareness for the games. The games have now been released multiple times on different consoles, such as the NES, SNES and Nintendo Switch. Captain Rainbow Sadly, Captain Rainbow has never been released outside of Japan, especially because of how interesting and bizarre the concepts of the game is. In Captain Rainbow, you take the role of Captain Rainbow, also known as Nick, who is a superhero that has lost his popularity. In search of becoming an idolized hero again, he ventures to an island known as Neiman Island, which is said to grant the wishes of those who travel to it. The inhabitants of the island are those in search of wishes of their own, and in an ironic turn of events are all obscure Nintendo characters that have been mostly forgotten to time some of which include Lip from Panel the Pond and Birdo from Mario Bros 2. Exploration can either go in two ways. The first is that you go straight to get your wish granted, leaving the inhabitants of the island behind, which will show the game's bad ending. And the second is that you help each person one by one by fulfilling their requests and trying to make their dreams become reality as you slowly build bonds with each character. Gameplay is rather relaxed in a similar vein to Animal Crossing where you spend your time in any way that you choose. The Frog For Whom The Bell Tolls or as it is usually called Kiri no Tame Mikane Wanaru which I most definitely butchered the pronunciation of, is a game for the Game Boy. Strangely, the game has no proper combat of any sort and relies on that you have enough strength to beat each enemy. Battles start when you walk into an enemy, where you'll automatically begin to attack. If you don't have enough health and defense when you start the battle, you will lose. The main character who does not have an official name, has the ability to change his physical appearance between a frog, snake and human, which all have their own special attributes, such as being a frog which will let you jump higher, but in turn makes you weaker in most battles. Surprisingly enough, 
Zelda Link's Awakening was built on the same engine as this game, and as an homage to this, the main character's friend, or foe, whichever way you would like to see it, appears in the game, him one of the main songs of the original game. Another tie to the Zelda series is that you can collect the Mirror Shield, which would eventually become a staple item in the Zelda series. The game will most likely never be localised due to its heavy ties to Japanese culture though. The title is also a joke on the book of a similar name, For Whom the Bell Tolls. The Satellaview The Satellaview was an attachment to the Super Famicom, which would connect to a satellite to broadcast multiple types of media to the console, some of which include news, articles, music, and most importantly, games on your video game console. Games would often be released in parts, which would be released weekly and would include unique features such as live radio broadcasts over the games. Sometimes the broadcast would even mention upcoming events or changes that could affect the game, such as an increase in enemies or higher loot drops from enemies. Types of games included ports of standard SNES games, unique games made specifically for the console, and additional content and stories to already released games. Some notable games include BS The Legend of Zelda, which completely remade the original Legend of Zelda with all new features such as multiple playable characters and live broadcasts. BS The Legend of Zelda Ancient Stone Tablets, which was a side story to The Link to the Past. This game was released in parts weekly. Additional maps and stories to Fire Emblem games. A crossover between Mario and Excitebike and multiple unique games made exclusively for the console, such as puzzle games, and ports of pre-existing games such as Mario Bros 2. Sadly, most of the games have been lost to time, since they had to be saved to a special dummy cart, such as a Kirby Pachinko machine, and all online and broadcast features have been fully shut, been fully shut down. Besides from the uninteresting sounding name, the concept of this game is actually rather interesting. In the so-called game, if you would like to call that, you use your controller to colour in a picture on the screen. The console would then be connected to a special sewing machine, which could be used to create custom sweaters with Mario characters on them. Sadly, most information on the game has been lost to time and a very select amount of images remain on the game. A similar game was later released on the Game Boy Color, which was known as Mario Family, which was slightly more advanced but had most of the similar features. There was also a planned game called Kirby Family, which would work almost identically to Mario Family, just with Kirby characters. Thank you for watching my video. From now on, we plan on releasing one video every month, focusing mainly on Nintendo related games and facts. If you would like to keep in touch with our future videos, please subscribe to our channel and like so that we can reach more people via the algorithms. Thanks for watching.